What's up? It is win or go home or go somewhere other than a football field. <laughs> Rob Lee Hockey, Joe Emer, this is first and ten. And everyone wants to finish with five straight wins, Joe, and earn that nice fancy blue plaque. Yeah, that blue plaque obviously signifies the state championship. One time I got a medal with a blue ribbon on it for participation in a Cub Scout event. Congratulations. Thank you. Highlight of your life? One of the highlights. <laughs> All right, we've got some <laughs> great highlights tonight. First round games. Boy, what a crazy first round of the playoffs we have tonight. One of the great games at Lad People Stadium. This is a good one tonight. That's, of course, Fairhope and Davidson meeting in a 6A first round showdown. They met a couple years ago in the playoffs. That one went into OT. Yeah, Davidson winning that game. But what would happen tonight? Let's bring in Russell Colburn. Russell, hey. what's going on, buddy? Hey guys, you know, uh, Fairhope from Region 2, Davidson Region 1, so maybe not a lot of familiarity there, but they did have some uh, summer scrimmages, actually had a fall scrimmage, got to know each other a little bit, and certainly Fairhope put that knowledge to work today with a win. Let's show you the highlights. Nate Andrews to Dave Kirksey, and they are in business in Warrior territory right there along the sidelines. That sets up Andrews again around the red edge, and he'll find his way into the end zone. It's 7 to nothing, just like that. Davidson ball now. Cam Jackson rolling out. He's looking for Chase Rankins, and the Warriors are moving the ball. But Fairhope able to force a fourth down, and Jackson to Davin Wright. He drops it, so a missed chance there for the Warriors. Fairhope takes over. They put themselves into a fourth down as well, but on fourth and 16, Andrews goes on the left side all the way down the sidelines and out of bounds. That sets up a 31-yard field goal. Fairhope nails it, and they go on to win by that final of 10 to nothing. That score holds up the entire second half. I'm joined now by some Fairhope personnel. We got John Patrick Sherling, Nate Andrews, and of course the head coach, Adam Weingarten. Uh, let's start with you, John Patrick. Defense pitches a shutout out here. You guys have been playing good football all year. What was the difference? We just did what we were supposed to do. That's it. Just executed the game plan. What kind of looks did Davidson give you that you guys were able to react to? Uh, they just ran the ball a lot, and they kept doing the same thing, and we stopped it. And that's how we did it. All right, let's bring in Nate now. We heard You heard your name a lot here in these highlights. How big is it for you? All the quarterbacks are injured, so you step in from your wide receiver role to quarterback, and you're just, you're just an athlete, man. What were you able to do tonight? Well, first of all, I like to thank the um, defense because they, um, they were getting a lot of stops, and well, we were just running the ball trying to milk the clock. So we just, we just tried to get the W, and we did. For your coach, it's his first playoff win. First, uh, co of course, uh, Adam Weingarten takes over his first year as head coach here. What does this win mean? Well, I, I, it's a, it's a great team win. You know, I, it's you know we want to be playing our best football. When we hit the playoffs, and you know, like I've told uh, several people, you know, we've been through a few ups and downs throughout the year. But I really feel like the negatives we've had during the season has really helped us grow into a better football team. It's, it's gave us a lot of life lessons that we needed to we needed to learn from as as a unit. And, um, you know, I think we've grown from it. And I think it showed tonight that you know in the ball game how we play. So I couldn't be prouder of the team. But it, it, this game is about our kids, and, and they and they deserve it. And I'm proud of them. We're excited to go next week. All right, guys. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Good luck in the next round. Thank you. All right. Uh, Fairhope will go on to play the winner of Stanhope, Elmore, and Carver, Montgomery. Carver is the third-ranked team in the state, but Stanhope is on top of them, 13-10. Rob. And the good news is, Russell, all three of those guys you interviewed were impressed with your sweater. <laughs> That's right. Somebody's got to bring some style to this show. I've been saying it. All right. All right, well, keep trying. Thanks, Russell. <laughs> all right, Russell, wearing the uh, Nick Saban sweater there tonight <laughs> at Loud People Stadium. All right, let's move on. Let's get that sweater off the TV. All right, Miguel Tulin was perfect in the regular season, but those 10 wins don't mean much now. Uh, the second-ranked Jackets remember what happened in the playoffs last year when Central Phoenix City sent him home in the quarterfinals. 41 to nothing, so hoping to avoid that. Of course, this is round one today. Super six or bust from McGill T. And uh, trying to become the first team in school history to get that championship game. Didn't look good early, though. Look at this. Enterprise comes to play. Carlos Robinson untouched. 7 nothing. Enterprise. They build a 10 nothing lead. Here comes McGill. Edo Smith, far sideline. He's going to walk in. They still trail 10 7 after an Enterprise field goal makes it 13 7. Ensuing kickoff. Filbert Marshall. There goes Philbert. 88 yards, and the Jackets are up 14-13. They actually would give up another score, but then Jason Smith and the offense take over. He rumbles in here. They score 28 unanswered, and McGill Tulin 
Uh, looks like McGill Tulin in the second half. 56 33. So the Jackets advance. They likely face fourth ranked Auburn, who was playing Oak Mountain tonight. Spanish Ford cruised to a 9-1 regular season record on the strength of the rhyme time duo Joel Poe and Blaine Crane. The double trouble tandem hoping to provide a playoff spark against Carol Ozark. Sparks flying before the game. Check out the pyrotechnic display. <laughs> Bringing all the guns out for the playoffs. And Joel Poe on the sidelines getting ready. He would have a big first half. And let's get to some of that action. Poe. To Sammy Tolbert here in the first quarter, 11 yards for the touchdown. Nice play by Tolbert. Big bit, big game by him as well. How about some Toros D? Christopher Morehouse houses the quarterback. That would lead to a Carroll punt. Second quarter action now. Poe to Samuel Harris, 24 yards on the gain. Same drive. I mentioned Sammy Tolbert. Big game. Finds the end zone again. 14 to zip. How about one more shot of the Toros D? Jonathan Cook cooking up some pick six biscuits. <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> 21 to zip. Toros cruising 44 to 7 actually was the last score we heard in the fourth quarter. But either way, it looks like the Toros are definitely moving on in this one. They could play Demopolis next or how do you pronounce that? Silicaga. Silicaga. Yes. That's why Rob Lee Hockey's here, folks. Next, uh, check a look at this. St. Paul's cruising as well. 26 to zip over Eufaula. They may play third ranked Homewood or Greenville. Next, I could read both of those words. Well done. Spanish Fort and uh, St. Paul's both looking good in 5A Region 1. Now Valley, uh, Valley and Viger. So the Wolves trying to make it potentially 3 0 for that region. First half, Devin. Adams to Steven Watts. Nice pickup of 30. Later on the drive, Reverters Barron plunges in from one yard out. He's in there somewhere. 7 0 Viger. Valley, though, comes right back. Joshua Meggs hits Davian Bailey. Look at that catch. Wow. For the score. Touchdown. Valley ties it at 7. A defense really dominating this first Yikes. half. And the centers didn't really dominate, though. Not a great snap there. It was 7 7 at the half. Viger recovers that, and the Wolves like, get on the board in the second half. 29-14 is the final, so Viger moving on into the next round, likely against either Homewood, uh, who's ranked third in the state, or Greenville. All right, Briarwood at Jackson. Jackson, Danny Powell trying to get a win on his 63rd birthday today. Briarwood QB Chandler Wilkins to Daniel Robert for the 35-yard touchdown. Briarwood up seven to zip. Wilkins and Roberts, they go and connect for another Briarwood touchdown in the back of the end zone. 19 yards, Briarwood up 14 now. Striking it again, wow. Ethan Simmons, a handoff, two-yard run, all Briarwood in the second. And guys, Jackson, this is a crazy upset. Everyone picked them to possibly win the title this year. That's but, shocker. yeah, shocker. 31-13, to Jackson Falls to Briarwood. Yeah, just two weeks ago, they were undefeated, ranked second in the state. And now they're done. That is the upset of the night so far. All right. Taking a look at some scores now. Sarah Land and Chilton County, 14 all. Sarah Land had a chance to win it. They had the ball on the three with a field goal to win it, but a bad snap. And so here we are, all tied at 14 in overtime, folks. That goes, that goes to overtime. LaFleur on the road, just three and seven, but uh, hanging tough with Benjamin Russell, who's ranked, uh, but looks like LaFleur could go down 26-12. They trail right now in the fourth. 